Many thanks for choosing us. First Lady, Her Excellency Rebecca Kofoado is advocating for the involvement of women in peace negotiations. According to her research indicates that women involvement in such conversations has a potential of resolving conflicts. The First Lady who was speaking at this year's International uh, Women's Day under the theme Breaking the Bias also lamented about the poor state of remuneration for the Ghanaian women. She also used the opportunity to encourage women to use their voices and platforms available to them to cause the change they want. At the presidency, Lady Julia Hosei Tutu, Honorable Simon Hosei Mensa, Ashanti Regional Minister, Professor Rita Kusia Dixon, Vice Chancellor, KNUST, Nananum. Honorable Ministers and MPs, Honorable MCEs and DCEs, faculty members, panel members, students, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The movement for gender equality, inclusiveness, and removal of biases has been a long-standing struggle. Many have sacrificed prominence, time, resources, and even limb and life to get us to where we are today. History shows that we have indeed come a long way, yet a lot more needs to be done. It is true we have made substantial progress when it comes to education. However, gender disparities still remain. Again, women's representation is still lagging in politics. Our constitution guarantees gen gender equality. However, women, are still, women still face inequalities directly and indirectly through stereotypes and social practices. Simply put, gender equality be before the law still does not translate into reality. We know conflict affects women and children the most, and yet women are largely absent from the peace table. Studies, however, show there is a 35% greater chance of peace agreements lasting 15 years when women participate. So if women are integral to peace, why do we largely exclude them from peace negotiations? Women are still paid less than men for the same work. Yet their contributions to society is enormous. African women form the majority of farmers, educationists, and healthcare providers. My generations and generations before me have put in their time to address these biases. I salute all those women and men who have worked for a world of parity. It is now time for my generation to pass on the baton to the younger generation. You are now the front line for advocating for a gender equal world. We are behind you, supporting with our insights, resources, and years of experiences in the trenches. That is why this year we decided to have a much younger panel and audience for our International Women's Day discussions. As nature dictates, the old must always give way to the new. The Equality Front needs new blood, renewed energy, fresher perspective, and a new kind of hunger. The truth is some have fought to exhaustion, and some are no longer capable of the needed impatience or indignation at the obvious gender biases that still exist. But we have a generation that is presented with technology and the immense possibilities for intense activism. At the touch of a button, at the click of an icon, you have access to the world, including decision makers and a network of like-minded global citizens. This was something that was unimaginable decades ago. It's time for you to negotiate your way to equality and the removal of biases. I have no doubt about your ability and hunger to do so. Your voice is integral to who you are. How you use it is vital to your becoming the person you want to be. 
Use your voices to create the change you want. Imagine the world you want to see and create the world for yourselves and generations after you. Leave your footprints in the sands of time. When the time comes, comes hand over the baton. Your experiences, your defeats, your triumphs will inspire another generation. We will get there, but only if we all work together. Because one thing is clear, bias is not normal. It is the antithesis of development. No amount of explanations, apologies, or excuses can make it right. Your talent, intelligence, drive, ingenuity, and determination qualify you for a place at a table. Your field of endeavor does not matter. What matters is that no one, no one should stop you. As the American civil rights activist, Philip Randolph puts it, freedom is never granted, it is won. I wish all of us fruitful celebrations. I thank you. But how far are we with the national efforts towards gender equality and mainstreaming? Executive Director of Global Action for Women Empowerment, Rosamund Ewenam Atutonu, joins us live via Zoom for more. I'm grateful for your time, Madam. Over the period, there's been a lot of efforts to get women up there. Where are we now with regards to actually breaking this bias? Yeah, thank you for your invitation and Thank you all to all the listeners. Good afternoon. Um, in terms of where we are right now, we do not have any statistics, but from what has been before and what it is now, we've seen that we are making a little progress. And um, we've seen a lot of women occupying a lot of positions that were not occupied previously. And, um, and a lot of women are also now coming up and they are taking um, assembly uh, positions and even um, the ones in the um, other jurisdictions of the political, economic, and also um, the social, that is our local communities, yeah. So um, we do not have enough statistics, but we are doing our best to um, occupy certain positions that were not previously occupied by women in the past. Yeah. For, for you, what would you say has been the challenge? Why we've been moving slowly? So most of the challenges are based on what the society says, mostly um, so, social norms, normally detects what a woman should do. And when uh, we get down to the grassroots, that's a community level, most of our engagements with them uh, indicates that uh, women are supposed to behave in certain ways or uh, be in certain positions and they are not supposed to partake in any other um, activities that men are supposed to partake in. But uh, looking at, um, the world globally, we've seen a lot of changes and uh, some of the challenges are coming from the grassroots, the way we were trained, the way we were brought up. We were told women are supposed to do this, do that. But um, looking at everything as a whole, I would say social norms is a major hindrance to our, our participation or um, women's uh, uh, participation in social, political, and economic uh, activities. Mm. Yeah, well, we've also been um, making efforts to ensure the passage of the Affirmative Action Bill. Any progress? Um, for the Affirmative Action Bill, yes, we've always been fighting and fighting, and we are still fighting for it to be passed so that we can have equal representation at the parliament level, that's the national level. But um, we haven't gotten anything concrete to say, yes, we have achieved uh, 
so so and so percentage on getting the bill passed. We keep pushing and pushing, but uh, nothing uh, positive seems to come out from all our um, advocacy yes, and uh, efforts to push the bill to be passed. Mm -hmm. So if uh, with this platform, I'll also use it to push for it to be passed because we really need a lot of representatives that's women representatives at the parliamentarian level so that we can use that to um, educate the grassroots at the community level that even at the national level this number of women are represented there and then they can equally be empowered to do other things mm -hmm. yeah Rosemond Atutonu, I'm grateful for your time. She is Executive Director of MOA. And that the Makola market in Accra, some traders are calling for equal opportunities for all persons. Mabna and Cynthia, both of whom are traders there, share their experience juggling between family life and making ends meet while navigating a society biased against women. My colleague Michael Ashali spoke with them. The world is marking International Women's Day and we are here in Makolo Market to speak to some of the hard-working, arguably one of the most hard-working women that we have um, in the country, women here at Makolo Market, here, to interact with them, to understand their perspectives on International Women's Day. The world says breaking the bias, the theme that christening this year's celebration. So be speaking to some of the market women here. I have one market woman here who will tell us her name briefly. She has a son here. Definitely telling you how she, she's much interested in making sure her son is educated and the hard work she puts into um, getting her goods also. So, Mami Pacha, what are you saying? Mabna. Okay. Auntie Mabna, and then you be say, and Mamma, you're going to manage a few years and so Baha, and be a Juma. How difficult is it? Mami Pacha, I'm sorry, three o'clock. I will fear. Hey, sorry, yeah, Gianni. At the mammy mano, the Obeka will fear no. Now, my father, Major Reno, Miss Yessie, and who be by four o'clock, except my befaka and my bedroom. So, your bedroom, so I be so dry. Oh, oh, shut time, never bear to say seven and a seven thirty, except Miss Yessie, a crano, number in the cold school. In see, a crime fast for a bet on a dear business car, so be boy will fear, share, and colano. A man is a young cassa, a bread is a chain, man, man, a man, a bread will fear, clutch, and a man, man, is a man, a hard clutch, and a man, man, that's what I'm much. Oh, can I care, who cry, a man, one, yes, I came. Bring up my baby and sap in the womb. It's a man, so so no. And they die so much to me, then. Would you mind a pan, a man, a bread? It's only said to no, not a bit my baby kitchen and I would school there won't could be. She said, I know who sent her, 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 Office, yeah, Bema so so yeah, then ever for oh, Bema office or bass or so. They said, Yeah, Jimmy, be a mamma, ye be a or bass or so ye be and this a first now. Yes, so a bass, if you're in a yard, then they said, Yeah, new will be. Oh, a personal experience, say, Oh, you know, because oh, you're buying two to me away. Oh, the baby, and still on International Women's Day, Member of Parliament for Not Tong Samuel Okujetu Ablakwa has stressed the need to review Ghana's laws to further support the girl child. Speaking at an event to support girls in his constituency as the world marks International Women's Day, he said there must be stiffer punishment for men who defile young girls and prevent them from achieving their fullest potential. There's more in the following report. More than $4,000 since girls in the Volta region receive sanitary towels, bathing soaps, roll-ons, shaving sticks, and educational materials. The objective was to support efforts geared towards retaining girls in school. A not-for-profit organization inspired today and the member of parliament for North Tong, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, 
are the brains behind the initiative. You people have given us this thing because of this, some of us will not be going to boyfriends and girlfriends for money. So I thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I find it difficult if I, I have my menstruation. Sometimes I, I, I've even used a uh, rug because my parents didn't get money to buy some for me. Inspired Today Foundation is nurturing a nationwide movement of female leaders through a concerted effort at achieving the Sustainable Development Goals 3 and 5. Founder and CEO of Inspired Today, Etonam Say, stressed the need to urgently address period poverty among girls. And this has been a very fulfilling experience. The visit to Volta region has been a great eye-opener. I mean, when you're in the greater Accra region, you think that people are suffering. You think that the girl child needs help. But if you come here, the rural communities, you realize that there are a lot of people who need the help. Places where some of the girls have never seen sanitary pad before. They've never used sanitary pad before. They're still using racks for menstruation. And we thought that this was a beautiful opportunity. North Tong MP Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa commended Inspire Today Foundation for promoting the welfare of the adolescent girls. Amongst you, I see future presidents, future ministers, engineers, teachers, pilots, software experts, entrepreneurs, you name it. There is absolutely nothing. There is no field now that you will not find ladies excelling in those uh, departments. So I am hoping that you also stay away. Finally, as I conclude, I'm hoping that you stay away from teenage pregnancy. In recent times, and we have met with the district police commander, we have told them that all the young men who are involved is defilement. Because if you are 15, you are 14, you are 13 years, you have no business uh, engaging in what adults do. It's defilement, you couldn't have given consent. And so we've asked that the law takes its course. And we will come heavy on all those uh, men who are found culpable. The project was sponsored by the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Wilma Africa, Step Publishers, First Class Shipping Services, Fine Print, and Benevolent Individuals. International Women's Day is also a call to accelerate women's equality. The Northern Regional Crime Officer Superintendent Bernard Baba Ananga has assured the people of Tamale Metropolis that security will continue to patrol the city to ensure life and property are safe. He said this heavy deployment of both plain and uniformed police officers, the anti-terrorism unit, the military and the Operation Calm Life team to continue these patrols to ensure the city is safe. He said this when he outlined some of the things that security is doing to keep the city calm. We invited the military already. Uh, we normally do this calm line, so they had to increase their numbers. And we also put out more uniformed policemen uh, with our counter terror units, as well as uh, plain clothes. So uh, we went into the patrols within the city, the metropolis, all the areas that matter. And then uh, subsequently, uh, we did it after this morning where we closed and then the day patrols continue. How long will these patrols con continue? Or how it, long will it stay? It, this, these patrols have come to stay. We want to assure the public that there is peace. Uh, any person at all can go about his own business without any problem, um, assure them of their safety, that the metropolis is under control and the security services are on the ground. So it's going to continue as long as we deem fit. It's not going to cease now. Will there be something different you'll be doing or it's just going to be what um, you are doing currently? A lot of strategies put in place. 
and we also will increase our plane clubs, our intelligence setup. Uh, other places that we normally don't visit, we will visit there. And then also we'll be effecting our rest. Uh, we will not just sit down and say that yes, anybody walking by or doing anything is doing a normal thing. We will assume suspicious characters are out there to come in trouble for us and will be effecting our rest. Now, yesterday we were told that some names were given, some fingers were pointed at some people. Have you invited anybody for questioning yet or arrested anyone? Yes, we are interviewing people. Um, of course, some of them are pointing out, pointing accusing fingers to certain kinds of persons. That is not the interest of the investigation. What we are perceiving those 15 men who were on board that particular vehicle now went to the chief palace and fired at people. These are the people we are interested in. Not go around giving our attention to something that will not at the end of the day give us the, the benefits that we are looking for. So therefore, we are on a manhunt for these 15 people. Meanwhile, the Dr. Chema Na Fuseni Bawa has called on his supporters not to retaliate the attack on his palace yesterday. He says the supporters should allow the police to conduct its investigations and bring the perpetrators to book. Speaking at his palace this morning through his spokesman Bashiru Dabal, Na Bawa said what he seeks is peace in that area and nothing should be done to disturb that peace. We have invited you this morning to give an official statement on the armed attack on Dakwima Palace and Dakwima himself. Dakwima is expressing his most friendliness to the media houses and he told us this morning even on his sick bed that peace is what he cherished no member of the family should attack anybody in retaliation that we should leave the issue to the police to investigate this criminal attack. The official position of the palace is that we are appealing to the police to look for the perpetrators of this dastardly act and bring them to order to ensure that law and order is maintained in Tamale. Tamale is a peaceful place and it is the home of our ancestors and we will be Martina Bugri, our correspondent in the northern region, has joined us with more. Martina, what's the situation in that area as we speak? Hello, Martina. The situation is calm um, throughout yesterday. Till yeah. Go ahead, Martina. The situation is calm throughout uh, People are going about their duties. Everything is back to normal. Um, we have had some patrols going on too. And people are, are believing that the security will take um, take everything into their hands and ensure that um, the perpetrators are brought to book. 
Now, the, the Premier himself has been calling for calm and also asking his people not to retaliate. How are they taking the directive? Um, at the palace, those who were there and um, cheered on when they said that um, he, he, he's appealing for calm, he's appealing for peace, and nobody should take into their, the law into their own hands. Um, in appreciation to what he was saying or agreeing to what he was saying. But they are also warning that if the police does not live up to expectation and they sense that they are uh, condoning with the, those who shot at the palace, then they will have no option than to take the law into their own hands and defend the Dakwema Palace. That's the warning or caution they are giving, even though they are calling for peace. Mm. But the police have been assuring you of their presence and the fact that they will make sure there's calm in that area. What have you seen yourself? Um, I saw some few um, vehicles parked with uh, military and police officers on my way to the office this morning. And around the Dakwema Palace, this morning, I also saw some um, military and police patrols around the area. And so, yes, the, the police and the military are on the streets as we speak. And um, it's not uh, so big loss like we have seen, we saw it earlier yesterday in the morning. But what I'm being told is that they have uh, uniform and plain clothes uh, officers amongst the people roaming around and so you're unable to tell who's a security person or not and these are some of the measures we have put in place to ensure that the area is calm and peaceful. Martina Bogri is our correspondent in the northern region. To the northeast region, the regional minister Yudana Zakari has condemned the action of students of the Wulugu Senior High School who staged a violent rampage in protest over food and water shortages. The violent protests on Friday led to the destruction of properties and ultimately to the closure of the school as teachers fled for their lives. According to the minister, a committee has been tasked to investigate the cause of the disturbance. Mr. Yidana said such violent misconduct will not go unpunished. Elias Tanko has more. Tension had been mounting in the school since last year over several concerns by the students. The students had been complaining about the general inadequate infrastructure situation, including the lack of accommodation, a dining room, classroom decks, water and sanitation facilities, among others. On Thursday, March 4th, however, the tension boiled over as the students were frustrated by la on Thursday, March 4th, however, the tension boiled over as the students who were frustrated by the lack of attention to their concerns staged a rampage to demand action from the school authorities. The protest was, however, suppressed after the regional minister led the delegation to engage with the students. Nonetheless, the students resumed the protest the next morning chasing away the headmaster and his staff before attacking and destroying the school properties. The regional minister, Mr. Yidana Zakari, speaking to Joy News, disclosed the state of destruction caused by the rioters' students. Then when we got home, less than 30 minutes, we got calls that the students were in back at what they did earlier, and they pushed down portions of the wall, and mm. they destroyed some other school property and attempted to destroy the school bus which was only given to them last year <laughs> a school building that was commissioned last year by the mc mm. they vandalized the luga place and they named some teachers that they were looking for so this situation was that bad the teachers were not in charge and so because the students succeeded in getting the headmaster out of campus intimidating the teachers the night is free for them. And when we engage the teachers and ask them whether they were in control, they said no. So when things are like this, and you underestimate what people can do, they will have trouble on our hands. If you sit down and watch these young people, they may even burn down this. After several attempts to stop the vandalism, security personnel were deployed and the school was closed down. According to the regional minister, a committee has been constituted to investigate the matter. The minister said anyone found culpable will be severely dealt with to serve as a deterrent. I condemn in the strongest of terms the violent misconduct of these students. 
The Education Authorities will on Tuesday, 8th March, inaugurate a committee to investigate the immediate and remote causes of the disturbance and submit its report for consideration. Back here in Accra, grocery prices have skyrocketed. Preparing food is no walk in the park these days. A lot of readjustments and cutting out excesses. Well, Nanama, a wholesale grocery producer at Agbogloshi and other big markets, explains what goes into the pricing in today's edition of the Living Standard Series. <laughs> Groceries from farming communities arrive at Agbogloshi. For over 30 years, Nanama's job is to cut groceries from Gosu farms in the Hafu region to Accra and other big cities for sale. Although the job is tedious and sometimes dangerous, she enjoys it. Trucks break down. Oh no, I won't take 15 cities. The plantains are expensive. I buy them at a much higher price. I can't sell them for less. She leaves her six children far away in their half region to endure bumpy roads to cart her goods to the market. Sometimes she spends days on the road when the truck breaks down. Nana Ma would not disclose how much she earns, but said her profit has dwindled. Whenever we come to sell, we don't get much because there are many competitors. Sometimes the farmers think we cheat them, but that is not the case. To understand why Nanama is driving a hard bargain, I engage Martin, a driver. He explains that he is compelled to charge more when carting groceries because of rise in fuel prices and the terrible state of roads. But what has bad roads got to do with the prices of groceries? Martin explains. <laughs> My vehicle has nine sections, costing about 2,000 CDs. Most of it goes into buying fuel. We have complained several times, but government has turned a deaf ear. The a break will bring you uh, the very latest from the world of business. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Women are breaking barriers in areas deemed for men. And on a day to celebrate women across the world, Joy Business throws the spotlight on Agnes Ininfo, a tractor operator at Myro Forestry in Agogo. Beverly Broom paid her a visit and has filed this report. She is a mother of three in a space many said will deny her an opportunity to be a mother. You are a woman, you can't give birth. Mm. At the end of the day, no man can touch you and all those things, but it's all were lies. It is never true that when you are a woman and you are a tractor operator, you can mm. never give birth. Mm. I'm an example of it. Oh, wow.
trained by GIZ project called AT Vets for Women, Agnes is the daring woman out of 120 trainees changing the status quo in a male-dominated field. Here, when they employ you, whether you're a man or you're a woman, they expect you to work equal as the men. At the end of the day, they expect the production to be equal. They don't care whether you're a woman or they want production to be equal. Mm. That's the one of the biggest challenges that we, the women, we are facing here. So it means you're treated just like the men. You're not giving any special no. treatment. No, 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 no. Here they don't, they don't have any special treatment. There are millions of women out there seeking opportunities in various sectors. Agnes has a message for you. There is a saying that mm. what men can do, women can do more better. Mm. So what our advice other women is that they should take this challenge upon themselves. Mm. They can do it. And it is never true that when you are a woman and you want to do a man's work, you can't give birth or there are other opportunities that you can. It is never true. It's, it's, it's negative thoughts that some of them has. Mm. So um, what our advice, they shouldn't listen to any negativity things and other which will affect their minds yeah. okay so it's a good thing they should give themselves a try it's been four years since mrs adai Eninfo began her journey as a track operator but she's not stopping anytime soon as, <laughs> as long as i'm alive really <laughs> you don't have any intentions of switching mm, fields? Not for now, dear, no. For now, dear, no. Because <laughs> I love working, using the machine to work. Mm. Even when when I was, as I'm still at the workshop, mm. assisting the stalls, I'm not okay. Because it's like, I'm not doing anything. I should get something to So you miss being on the field? Oh, in fact, today <laughs> you made my day. <laughs> <laughs> Women out there are doing incredible job. Jobs that you might not think they will avail themselves to do. Agnes and Patience are fair examples of women breaking the barriers in the male-dominated space. To every woman, it is possible to defy the odds as you continue to make impact in your society. Happy Women's Day. Beverly Broom, Joy Business. And we have a special conversation on International Women's Day, breaking the bias uh, coming up on the marketplace. It's a two-hour special. Don't miss it. Up next, sports. For IBF and IBO Bantamweight champion, Joseph De King Kong Agbeko has told Joy Sports he's uncertain about his immediate future. His last international fight was against Abner Mares in August 2013. Mares beat Agbeko in one of the most controversial fights in recent years. Speaking on Joy Sports Link, the 41-year-old uh, boxer says he is focusing more on developing the next generation of Ghanaian boxers. Uh, boxing is a sport that uh, nobody has to retire. Okay. Uh, it's a sport that if you don't beat your opponent, it's going to beat you. Uh, when you start feeling the punches, nobody's going to tell you to retire. So when I listen to people telling other fighters to stop boxing, uh, I laugh sometimes because boxing is one sport that I believe that is uh, one of the major career in life that uh, we can say uh, God calls people to do it as uh, our religious leaders who say, oh, this is a man of God or God has called you, you know. Okay. I believe boxing is one of a career that you have to be called by God before you can you, you can do that. I, I always, I mean, mix boxing with uh, with religious leaders' job. I see, I see. Uh, because I believe uh, all the prophets or all the uh, uh, religious leaders were being called by God and uh, boxing is a sport that when you go into the 
gym you want to be a boxer uh, when you start sparring on your first day you will see blood coming out of your mouth or your nose or a cut or whatever on your second day you will still see blood you will continue to see blood until some time on your easy day you still see blood so when you see someone goes into the gym and then with he get bloody uh, nose and then goes home and come back the following day then you have to know that something is born in him the spot is born in him the passion is there when you have that passion inside you you don't really focus on the financial benefits of the sport you don't focus on anything you just enjoy doing it and that is what i call calling you know you do something with no expectation of fundraising no expectation of of anything and it's a tough sport uh, the prophets are warriors because they fight for God you know so boxers are like uh, uh, prophets <laughs> you know? so I, I think I'll say uh, gradually the passion is dying slowly inside me that's what I'll say uh, the frustration uh, keeps growing and uh, uh, right now my focus is beginning to grow more in uh, the younger generation so we don't know maybe we might call it a quiz soon maybe you know so we don't know that was joseph king kong Agbeko speaking about his passion for boxing dying and now he wants to focus on uh, producing the next generation of boxers in the country and that is your sports for now but you can head on to myjoyonline.com and read some more sports stories. Up next is World News. Good afternoon. Welcome to Showbiz here on Joy News. In our season, Ghanaian actor Bela Samoa has advised prospective actors and actresses in the country to be proactive and hone their, uh, their skills. Uh, he spoke on Showbiz A to Z in Kumasi this weekend. With Kumawood, we never named ourselves Kumawood. It was the media that gave us that name. And they did so by um, the mere fact that a gentleman decided to honor the movies that we use indigenous languages in acting. And then his company was called Kumawood and Akobing. And the, fi the film festival was Kumawood and Akobing Film Festival. festival. So when the first one was done, the maiden edition was done, the second one was done, and it was televised nationwide yeah. via GTV. Yeah. That is when it got popular. So right after that, every movie that came out that had P as a language being used, the media started calling those movies Kumawood movies. 